Welcome back, my little tubers, to another draft here on Arena. Got some more best of three all will be one. Again, just a few more days out until we get ourselves some lovely shadows over Innistrad remastered. Uh, best of three, all will be one. And we are going to lead off with a Skrelv's Hive. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmot for all of your magic card related needs. Scribes, or Skrelv's Hive, rather, is a pretty damn strong card. It is, I will say, a two-man enchantment that doesn't initially do anything unless the opponent's already corrupted and you have toxic creatures. But it is a card that also kind of just wins the game if left unchecked and you have a few other ways to back it up. Trawler Drake's great, Brutalizer's good, a couple other fine cards there. I don't think you're ever passing a Skrelv's Hive. Pick one, pack one, unless unless you just really don't like it for some reason, and maybe there's a really good uncommon, but pretty easy pickup there. And I think we're just going to jump right in and maybe take the viral spawning. It's either that or Duelist of Deep Faith. I guess the Duelist is safer in the sense that it keeps me in white, but spawning, if you do end up in the Toxic deck, is really freaking good. Uh, what other good cards do we have here? We have the Golem, we have the Justicer... Yeah, there aren't really too many good cards in this pack, so taking one of the poison mechanic cards seems nice. Following up the Skrelv's Hive, eh, I think I'd rather just take the white creature here than jump into green immediately, because we could end up in a different color pairing. We could also end up not playing Toxic, right? I mean, obviously, if you have Skrelv's Hive, it's better, but you don't necessarily need to be playing some kind of Toxic deck to make it good. All right, we will be taking a third pick Evolving Adaptive here. Kind of sad that we passed the um, Viral Spawning now, but what are you going to do? This is clearly just the best card in the pack. What's the second best card? Maybe like Axiom Engraver? I don't know. Adaptive, I think, is the best of the um, evolution cards or the oil creatures that get bigger when something happens. And yeah, we're not really losing out on much. One of the better green uncommons for sure, so an easy pickup there for me. And it seems like we have a pretty easy Ruthless Predation then to follow that up. A few other cards that have synergy with the Toxic Creatures, or it is a Toxic Creature itself in the case of Dune Mover, but let's go with the cheap removal here over Devotion over Dune Mover. Looks like we have a pretty solid start, all things considered. Now I will maybe take a different color at this point. The best card in the pack is the Gataxian Raptor. Maybe it's not super synergistic with the cards I already have, but it is the best card. Scrap Trap has a lot of synergy, I guess. Thirsting Roots is like okay, but this seems like a point where taking Raptor and staying open is going to be the better line, even if we don't end up playing blue. Another kind of weak pack here. I don't really want to take a Predation Steward. We don't really need to take another Thirsting Roots, or rather, we have the opportunity to take a Thirsting Roots just like previously, but I don't think we want it. Um, I guess I could take Head Cleaver here. If we wanted to lead in the Poison. The Bardish is fine. This is just really not a great pack. I guess the card I would be saddest about losing is the Head Cleaver. Okay, another Raptor here is good if we don't want to just take the safe pick of the Dune Mover. Probably want to just take the Dune Mover here, as that can go into any deck. Although, man, Raptor is such a good common that I guess seeing another one this late means that blue, blue is probably going to be open, which is no surprise. I mean, nobody wants to be blue, but Raptors are good enough, I think, that I'm going to take that as a sign and take it here. Farming Bird, Prologue to Pharesis. Yeah, we'll take the bird now. And here's a Prologue. Okay, we could be doing some weird, like, blue-white poison strats. Or blue-white proliferate strats. Complete Devotion on the Wheels, a fantastic one. We just have the Duelist and the Hive to... Um, I guess the prologue too. Uh, that's three different ways to poison. Okay, yeah, this is good. I normally don't lean into this type of strategy because blue-white, you want to be playing the, um, 
the artifact deck, but this looks like it could be a solid start. Double prologue now. And the Vivisurgeons. Okay, that's a good card draw effect with Proliferate. This will be an interesting deck if it's actually going to end up being blue-white poison. Zenith Chronicler, that is not the one we want to be looking for. In fact, this pack is just garbage. Best pack, our best card here is Drown, which I think we're going to end up taking over Apostle. Very possible I'm not playing white yet, right? We could try to be building the blue-white, or sorry, blue-black poison deck. In which case, the Drown is just going to be so much better. Yeah, let's do that. That makes a lot more sense. Also splashable in a pinch. Third prologue, huh? That's kind of interesting. All the other ones wield, though, so I don't think I need to be taking that early. I think the Ravenous Necro Titan makes a lot more sense here. This card is just fat. Four mana, six, six. Oftentimes, you're not going to have to uh, sack a creature. And currently in our deck, it looks like we have some pretty easy ways to get that flowing. The poison, that is. Yeah, I'm going to take the Titan and plan on wheeling the Prologue or the Head Cleaver. I think white might actually be the cut here now. As we get an Experimental Augury. Very nice. The thing about Hive is that you don't normally want to be splashing it. Same thing with... Um, What's it called? Urobrask's Forge. They're fantastic on their own, but you really want to have them on curve. And so if you're splashing them, it is far less likely that you're going to be casting them, you know, on turn two or three when you need to be to really get them going. Skittering here. Okay. This is looking nice. We're going to end up with a bunch of prologues in our deck. And on three mana, we have a bunch of nice 1-4 blockers. Let's take the Annihilating Glare here for some removal over Anatomist Proliferate. Uh, what we want to pick up are rats. The um, blighted rot bellies or whatever. Mm, kind of a late Malkator. I don't think that's going to end up making the deck though, right? I don't think blue-white is still the plan. Yeah, and I would lose out on a blue Skull Bomb here, so let's just do that instead. Another Thrumming Bird, another Raptor, Glistening Seer, not bad. Actually, any of these. Everything except for Graz is surprisingly playable here for us. I Man, I don't like Thrumming Birds because defensively they're just so bad. But I'm going to go ahead and take the 2-drop over a third Raptor here. Another head cleaver. All right. This is one of the least winning color pairs, according to the stats. That is to say, blue black. But that does not mean you cannot have a good blue black deck. In fact, I'm going to take the fleshless gladiator here. It's just a good early blocker, and with so many instant ways to just give some poison counters, I think this could be really good. Now <laughs> we have four prologues now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even the Anatomist is probably going to be okay. Maybe even two, sure. Pretty easy ambulatory edifice now. Our creature count's quite low. And again, I don't really have any of the rats that I want on turn two. Because with Prologue, the rats are kind of nice. Uh, Vivisection Evangelist could be a good splash here if we wanted, for sure. I don't have any fixing yet, but... Uh... Evangelist would be a very worthwhile splash. If Edifice wasn't here, I would take the Evangelist, but I'll just play it safe and take the 3-drop. Okay. That is spicy. Tekafall, Inquiry Dominus, 3-5 flying for 4. If you would proliferate, do it twice instead, and we have a lot of ways to proliferate right now, right? Augury, 2 Thrumming Birds, Drown, 2 Gitaxian Anatomist, Insight, okay. I mean, it's a 3-5 flyer for 4 to boot, so. Necrogen Communion. Actually, that's really good with Double Thrumming Bird and some Raptors. 
I normally don't like playing enchantments like this, but I think it's going to be good here. Ooh, man, Unctus is a retrofitter. Sadly, we just don't have the artifacts to make that a thing. Yeah, I only have the edifice and the skull bomb, so we can't take that here. We have a fifth prologue, a second communion. I think I'm going to end him cutting up this necro titan. Kind of want to take a second communion here. Is that crazy? I haven't seen any of the um, pestilent, whatever, the 1 1 flying black creature with toxic one. This is a weird deck. Actually, maybe Skull Bomb's worse than running the Necro Titan. Augury's great. Some more proliferate and dig. The biggest issue with this deck is that if we fall behind, it's going to be hard to come back. Because we don't really have board presence. Five prologues. So remember, in Limited, you can run any number of a card unless it's noted otherwise. So if you draft ten prologue to uh, Phoresis, you are able to run all of them, if you so choose. Is it good to do that? Maybe not. Am I going to? Probably. Ooh, Immobilizer is pretty juicy with all of our proliferate. Scrap Trap's pretty good for proliferate. I think we want the way to kind of stabilize and buy time. Okay, just a bunch of garbage here. We're not going to play any of that. Well, if nothing else, this should be fun. Though I might lose all my matches. Five prologues and a bunch of proliferate is a way to uh, make that six prologues is a way to get some easy damage on. I wonder if I'm actually just going to cut these communions now instead. This is a weird one. Yeah, maybe I just cut both communions. I mean, they're so good to put on the creatures, the flyers, but... Oops. The curve doesn't really warrant it. Gosh, I almost want to cut the shoulders head cleavers too. We don't really have a way to abuse them. I didn't take any of like that death touch indestructible tricks. What if I cut both of those and go like this instead? Running double communion with this few creatures is kind of crazy, but I kind of like this. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's do this. Sixteen land should be sufficient here. As with six of the prologues, anytime we have two mana, we can effectively just draw a card, right? Or we should go 9-7. Alright, let's do it. Blue, black, uber, poison, slash proliferate. Um... Yeah, if we fall behind, we're probably going to have a problem, but this deck looks like it can do some funny stuff, so let's give it a shot. Best of three. Okay, on to our first round. Damn, one lander. Come on! Alright, well, we got a mulligan to five here. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Well, it doesn't look like the Shuffler wanted me to win this one. Turn one Vat of Rebirth. Alright. Hey, if our Thrumming Bird doesn't die here, we can get them up to two poison immediately. So what you want to do here is attack... And then once the trigger goes on the stack, that is when you cast Prologue. Because you, if you cast it beforehand, then they, then they would be like, okay, I know I would get another poison, so. 
you wait until the trigger goes on the stack. That way, if they had like a Whispers of the Dross or Anoint, um, they might have just taken an extra poison, you know? Sure. Uh, I suppose I should just play out a creature here instead of playing out Prologue. Do I want to attack? Is it worth it? Probably not. Sit back and bide our time. Okay, I am happy to block here, and if they want to use their... Titanic Growth or Immortality, I'm happy with that. Sure. A little bit surprised they're letting me attack in with a Thrumming Bird here. Up to four poison now. If they want to attack again, I'll block again. Although I probably shouldn't, given that I have the Skitterling sack. Uh, I guess this time I'll wait. Oh, they waited anyways. So it's pre-combat this. Okay, and we'll just pass. I'm guessing our best draw is probably our Vivisurgeon's Insight at this point. Gives them another poison and refills our hand. What's your plan over there, OP? They might be missing some double green cards, given they haven't done anything the last two turns. Oh! Well, I called it. That is our best draw. They are very close to dead. This puts them up to six. Anatomus puts them up to seven. There's eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is actually working out. Yep, I'm... Snap blocking here. If they have like another Titanic, great. I'll just sack our Raptor in response. <laughs> and with that, that is game over. We hit them with the Thrumming Bird. They go up to seven. I'm just going to go land pass here, actually. Cute, but not good enough. Alright. Go up to 8. Go up to 9. Oh, well. Turns out we had lethal had we cast one of the prologues main phase, but what are you going to do? <laughs> well, that worked out. How many prologues did we draw that game? 1, 2, 3. We drew 5 prologues that game. Okay. Turns out if you draw five of six prologues, it's not too hard to uh, poison your opponent out. So, they're on green-black poison with a lot of combat tricks of sorts. If they have a Necrogen Communion as well, a Skull Bomb doesn't look terrible. But I don't even think we do need to do anything. I think we just run it back and say, let's go, baby. Let's poison some fools out again. 
That was a mulligan to five, wasn't it, too? Sounds good. Turn two, we have the prologue to get the uh, poison started. And then Raptor as a good blocker. I would like to find a couple of black sources at some point, but this is no big deal. Easily leading with Raptor here. Even though I do need to find another land and casting Prologue would get us closer to it, we want to stop any early bleeding. Our, our deck just wants to buy time. If they attack, sure, I'll block. I don't really care if they use a Titanic here offensively again. You got me. Great. Perfect. And let's get... Oh, they have Vraska's Fall. Alright, well. Let's go ahead and run out the Tekathal anyway, since we have so much Proliferate on our hand. So if they don't fall this turn, then we are going to start popping off hard. Nice, they didn't. I want to play Anatomist this turn to not only get the double proliferate, but also save our, um, save our Tekathal from Abraska's fall if they have drawn it now. Because if Tekathal doesn't leave the battlefield, we, we are just going to win with this hand. It's fine. does get me corrupted, but let's see what we draw here. Good. Drown the atrocity. Get him up to six poison. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why I'm going to bother attacking with anything. Our, our game plan is just sit back and poison them out. We have them at 9 poison, you know, effectively. They might just be dead next turn. Prologue, they're up to 7. Insight, they're up to 8, 9. And then any number of cards will just win the game here. There we go. Okay, I mean, hey. This, this match made our deck look very good. I don't think all the matches are going to be like that. But they could be, because that was that was a insane poison beating. Let me tell you. Okay, GGs. Let's go more. Go more. Go next. Let's go on to our round number two. Be on the play. Easy keep. Two prologues, a throwing bird, and another bird of sorts. Turn one crawling chorus from our opponent. This means we might want to play Raptor on turn three instead, depending on what they do here. Yeah, if I guess if they had played another poison creature, I would, but since they only played a mandible, I'm actually going to go ahead and get the thrumming bird starting to tick. Because if we cast Prologue there first, it's effectively turning our Thrumming Bird into a 2-1 creature in essence, right? It's fine. I might not be able to proliferate with the anatomist, depending on what they do here. Okay, that's not that bad. Because I can trade our raptor for the mandible. Yeah, easy trade. We don't care about them gaining a bunch of life. Our opponent might as well start with 100 life in this match. Hmm. 
I proliferate on the anatomist, I'm going to take 5 damage, but I put them up to another 5 total poison. I don't think we can afford to do that. Five life, five extra life is a five plus extra life, I should say, is akin to another turn, anyways. So, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Sure. Throwing Word won't be able to attack anymore, but... I will tap this one. This is a little bit risky to have tapped this anatomist as well, because if they have a removal for my other anatomist, yep, look, which it looks like they do. Oh, and that proliferates. So now the incisor glider triggers. We take infinite damage here. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Well, that might just end the game. I can put them to 5, 6, 7, 8. I cannot quite kill them with the poison. Ah, uh, if I had another swamp, the drown would actually save us. But now we're dead to the surgeon as well, because I can't go... If I could go glare plus... Drown, I think we would actually have a good shot of winning. But I can't, so we can't. Yeah, I can only kill one creature, and then I die. Damn, that's sick. I mean, they obviously had Scry going on as well. So, maybe attacking with that, um, or rather, maybe proliferating with that one was a mistake. I'm willing to believe that. Yeah, let's run it back. Be on the play again. Can't keep a hand that doesn't have any ways to poison the opponent. I don't think you can mulligan that hand, unfortunately, but... Using two of my proliferate early on and not having a prologue to get them initially poisoned is unfortunate. Fortunate. Very fortunate I am. This is going to be a perfect curve for us here. Prologue them. Turn two. Edifice their Justicer. Turn three. Sit back on our raptors and whatnot. This is going... Splendidly. We might actually kill them with normal damage here, given our hand and their draw, which seems terrible. I'm going to activate twice, but we want to leave one counter on for proliferate purposes. Okay, well, that's definitely a good game. <laughs> They're sacking their land there. All right. Game three. There was no game two. We went simply straight to a game three this match. There was no game one. There was no game two. That's not true. The game game one was fine. They just crushed me.
Turns out drawing the prologue was actually unnecessary. Yeah, another good hand here. Probably going to need to play the Gladiator on turn two, given we know they have a bunch of early plays. So, won't be able to prologue them on turn two is my guess, unless they don't do anything this turn. Okay. Ah, uh, no. There's no rush. Never mind. I was going to say, if they don't do anything on turn two, prologuing is fine, but I'd rather just get multiple creatures on the battlefield and then sit back. Because on turn four, we can go prologue into drown, proliferate, you know? You know I'm recording this video late because sipping on... Oh my god, I just realized I'm wearing my one of my green shirts. As I was saying, cheers, sipping on a brewski. Happy St. Patty's. I've recently acquired another green shirt. I guess I'm going to be floating head for the video. Annex Sentry. Yeah, that's a good one. Fortunately, Drown kills that right off the bat, and they can't even attack with Mandible here. It's just a trade. Oh, okay. Very happy with that. So, Prologue. Drown. Get back our Raptor. And if this game goes long, we have the Skitterling plus the Fleshless Gladiator combo. Ah, they have a Malkator. Nice. I think it's okay to proliferate here. That gets them up to Corrupted, and right now, the Raptor still blocks all of their creatures, and even if they do have a removal spell this turn for the Raptor, I don't take that much damage. Yeah, that's fine. We don't want to sack because we have the Skitterling. <clears throat> Alright, let's Skitter. Let's sack Raptor, hope to draw a land. Okay. That's good value. But we gum up the ground pretty well here. Five toughness, five toughness, four toughness is pretty good versus their board. They do have the Sinew Dancer as a tapper, but I don't have any poison yet, so. Currently, I think what our game plan is, assuming they don't do anything too crazy this turn, is to probably just like prologue main phase and then pass, return our gladiator back to the battlefield. That's fine. They are going a little bit wide here, but we have good blockers for the moment. Well, Actually, I'm in a little bit of a rough spot if they have a removal spell for the Tekath all this turn. Because a 1, 4, and 2, 5 do block 3 power creatures well, but they can kind of swarm me. Uh-oh. Here we go. Oh, they just passed. Okay. 
So I guess they're gonna sinew dancer is my guess. That's good. Can definitely buy us a lot of time. Yep, that's fine. We drew the immobilizer so we can turn off one of their three power creatures anyways. I mean, if we just rip like an experimental augury or two, we are going to be in real good shape. Okay. Nice. Insight's not bad. It's gonna put him up to seven. We get two more counters on the immobilizer. Let's get our raptor online. And we have him dead next turn, so we just need to not die this turn. Assuming Tekathal doesn't leave the battlefield, Anatomist proliferates twice, and then Prologue for the final point of poison. All right, GGs. Let's go, baby. Woo! Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this deck's insane. The Double Raptors have been clutch. Again, I stand behind it. I've been saying it for a while, but I think the Raptor is the best blue common. It is a fantastic attacker, fantastic blocker. It can trade up with a four toughness creature. These communions have done absolutely jack squat, but I haven't really drawn them anyways, I guess. But hey, six prologue. 2-0. Oh. Let's see if we can trophy with this poison blue-black deck. Third and final match. On the play. Great hand. Fantastic. Got one of our six prologues, a way to proliferate, two ways even, and then an edifice on the play usually can snipe something uh, versus a lot of decks. But hey, if they're playing a slower blue deck or something, that can give us time. I'm also okay with that. Ah, all right. This is, hmm. Tablet is very good. But if they're going slower, we're not under... Too much pressure, I guess. Alright, there's land 5, so we don't need to augury for land immediately. So green, blue, probably toxic, right? Toxic proliferators. There's probably merit in just to running out the edifice next turn as a 3-2. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. And just no attacking with the raptor, because getting in for random points of damage shouldn't be too relevant here. Silver Fisher. Simply trades with our Raptor if we want to. If they want to, I should say. Because I'm not going to be attacking. 
Mountain. That's a little bit spicy. Easily just casting uh, Insight here. Prolif proliferating them up to uh, two poison. Actually, the communion on our raptor is a little bit uh, spicy now too, huh? Hmm. So that gives us a reason to maybe not trade with the Fisher. They have more than one red land in their deck. I mean, I think I do trade, but there is certainly merit to not doing this. Okay. Sure. That's fine. We actually have a pretty cute combo here. I get to... Oh, I was going to say I can communion my edifice and then attack. If they block and trade, it comes back and we kill the star. Oh, I guess they would block with the stalker in that scenario, wouldn't they? Okay, let's main phase augury then and see what we can find. That's interesting. I really want to fire off one of the Communion's main phase. But I think I'll go ahead and wait here. So I could double Communion our Thrumming Bird. And if we do that, that would effectively be giving them 5 poison. Damn, they played a flyer. Okay. Let's prologue here. And then glare the blister Zoa. We might kill them next turn because we are about to put them to five poison. So if they are not careful... Double Communion and Throwing Bird is going to kill them next turn. And obviously it's kind of hard to play around your opponent giving you four more poison. So let's hopefully they just tap out for some random... Like play a Thrun or something, you know? The one time I'd be happy to see a Thrun, basically. Ass. All right, I'm not scared. I'm going to go for it. I had a counter. Okay, fair enough. At the very least, then, we are likely to hit him up to eight poison. Anatomist makes nine. There's a small chance that it was right to like hold the anatomist, because if I draw exactly Tekathol, I would have been able to double proliferate there. But as it stands, they already need to find an answer to the thrumming bird, or they do die. Now they get a scry with the seer, they have tablet for extra draw. They technically have the maze for an extra draw as well, so it's not like they don't get to look at quite a few cards here. Another Blister Zoar, for example, works. But we have so many cards that just instantly win the game. And that is one of them. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of any way to proliferate. 
or another prologue, but... Hey, maybe I didn't give enough credit to this deck because it is working out tremendously. The Necrogen Communions were not bad that game. The prologues, though. Six prologues and a bunch of proliferate, I mean... Assuming you're not getting swarmed down super quickly. That's pretty solid. Game two of the third and final round. We are one game away from glory. This is not a glory hand, though. Not a glorious hand. Oh, man. This is a hand that, again, I'm going to go down to five. I think, well... I take that back. We'll keep this six-card hand, but... We just need to find one of our prologues, and given that we have six of them, that shouldn't be too hard. We have a pretty good 3-4-5 curve out here with both colors, so I'll keep this. Sure. Got a counter, sack your Terramorphic. You know how it is. You know what's always there when I need it? Prologue. And given, again, that we have six of them in the deck, it is not very surprising that we would have one by now. Wow, they are attacking with the Cultivator. Huh. That's not good. That is, in fact, very bad, and I bottomed my one way to deal with it. Okay. We might get milled out here. I'm guessing they're going to use the Skull Bomb on the Raptor. I hope they don't. Oh, I guess Jace just turns off the Raptor anyways, doesn't it? Yeah, this is pretty bad for us. Nothing you can do about that. I mean, that's just one of the things about All Will Be One. There are a few bombs, Jace included, I would say, that are just not very fun to try to beat because they are extremely warping. Game warping, that is to say. Because you can't ignore it. If you ignore it, it will mill you out. We're going to proliferate here. Yeah. And again, knowing that I have an island and glare on the bottom, I'm not sure I can actually win this game anymore. Could have hit them for two poison there, technically. Like, if I communion my bird and then, uh... Use all three counters. Our plans are beyond your comprehension. Okay. So this is gonna be a con I'm gonna draw my next card and then I'm gonna concede here. Because Jace is already at 8, so if they wanted to, they could mill me for 24 cards. And we definitely don't want to show them the cards in our deck, you know? Yep, alright. That's good enough for me. Jace, Jace, Jace. Uh, yeah, that's just going to be a card that if we don't have Annihilating Glare for, I don't know if we might not be able to beat it. That's too bad. It is what it is, though.
It is what it is. Okay, on the play here for the third and final game. Let us pray that uh, we do not get early jaced because this is a really good poison them out hand. Fine. This hand can, in theory, already give the opponent. Oh, this is the same as game one. This is the same exact. All of these sequences were the same exact as game one. But as I was saying, uh, this hand can give the opponent up to five poison with the Tekathal double proliferate prologue. Really needed to draw something there. I'm going to guess it's probably correct to fire off the augury end of turn. Our opponent did have that counter in game one, didn't they? So, okay, it looks like they don't have it there. It's good at least. For another prologue. I'm going to take prologue as it's safer than trying to take communion with the Tekathal. Because I don't have high hopes that Tekathal is going to sit on the battlefield for any amount of time. And if it does, it's going to be good enough as it is anyways. But you can imagine communion on Tekathal would be nice. Well, they immediately topped whatever it was. So, uh, they could go land like Rebuke, I guess. We're really hoping it's just like a mesmerizing dose. Oh, sure. We don't care about that. So that's great for us. So we are going to immediately Anatomist next turn, because we want to make sure we can get the double proliferate off him. Um, or the Tekathal potentially goes away. That is, man, really, really bad draw. Holy crap. They top something. So we're going to get our draw step and then a card off of prologue and... Ideally, we find a spell among those. Sure, I won't block. We haven't taken any damage yet, so... Oh, there you go. There was their reason. So they were willing to trade their Fisher for my Tekathal, obviously. It's not terrible. That allows us to double block the Ravager with our Anatomist and our Rafter. They topped again. Uh. Oh, we can notably also give our Tekathal indestructible by eating all of the counters off of the Rafter, can't we? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we go for it. Give 
We might have messed up here. It feels like they messed up here. We just traded all three of our raptor counters for the Ravager if this goes through. That would be huge. Very nice. Holy crap. Okay. That might be the decision point of the game right there. Turns out throwing away one of your 5-5 Vigilance creatures is not a good strat. Any type of action. Ideally proliferate or more prologue. Okay. And that's going to be the end of the game, basically. That right there might kill us. My god. We still have a lot of good draws, but... That's the card I want. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've seen 10 of our 16 lands. Okay. This hurts. This really hurts. Alright, that is going to be a fast clock. I have 23 cards in my deck. <sighs> you can be made to obey. I need to draw Vivis Surgeons like right now. This would be a really painful loss. That's good. That's a start. Definitely want to attack Jace here for one point of damage. That gets them up to seven poison if it resolves. Our Tekathal now has three indestructible counters on it, funny enough. Man, kind of a nail biter here. Ah. So the Gladiator and the Communion were seen off of the experimental, right? So really, we've seen what seven spells and eleven land? Ugh. It is brutal. If the opponent has one or two ways to proliferate, we do just lose. Chase up to six again. That's fine. If they have their counter, I can't win. If they have their rejection...
mean, it's better than a land, I'll, I'll say that much. I have to aggro attack the Jace. Every single point of damage on that is just super important at this point in the game. Volt charge my face. Yeah. Jace goes up to six. I die to any more proliferate. If they have another proliferate, we lose exactly. I like how we can remove the three counters off of Tekathal to give one counter to Tekathal. That's kind of funny. Looks like they're digging for the win. All right. I approve. One counter on the Jace is good game. All right, well, they didn't top anything, so presumably we might get one more turn. Good luck. Oh, I'm going to be so sad if we lose this just because of the uber flood, but what can you do? Yeah. 11 of 16 lands. Here's the plan. If we do get another turn, we draw one of our prologues into any proliferate. But they would also need to not have any counter magic. <laughs> Actual absurdity. Oh, man. That sucks. 12 of 16 land. In the top half of our deck, effectively. Now there's proliferate. There it is. GG's. I say GG's, but man, this definitely made me a little bit frustrated. Both games we just lose to Jace, so be it. This one we had really good chances, I think. Oh, uh, well. What can you do? Ah, that's magic, baby. Oh, that's going to be one of those that hurts for a while. But I didn't think our deck was all that great, but it turns out it played out a lot better than I expected. Sucks that that last game there came down to... That last match, rather, came down to our opponent just playing Jace both games. And in the second game, we blooded out tremendously to lose. But that's magic, baby. What can you do? Deck was cool. Glad we got to do some good stuff with blue-black at the very least. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you back tomorrow for some more. Bye-bye.